Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel for episode 6 of Bumbling Through Birthright. Yeah, I screwed up the name last time, but we're good. We're on top of it now. All is well. If you missed last week's episode, make sure you check out the link in the description box or the link to the playlist right there. And with that, let's get into the craziness that happened. For this episode, there were four players at the table. We had Jan, Brindis, Valkyrie, and Roz. And if you don't remember, at the end of last session, we were going through our domain turns. So domain turns are basically four week long or one month long turns where you can either do four weeks worth of things or you can do a giant action for one month. Everyone else did their domain turns at the end of the last session, so if you want to check those out, again, link down below. Uh, but Valkyrie didn't actually do hers, so she did hers first thing in this session. And she decided to split her actions over the four weeks, so for three weeks she played this Bounty Hunter game, which is a new game that our DM made up. It's very similar, I think, to pit fighting, where you gotta roll the dice and figure things out, but just a slightly different game. So she did that with mixed results, and then she spent one week gambling and lost everything. I don't think she lost everything that she made in those first three weeks, but she lost everything that she gambled. But she didn't go into debt, because that is a thing that you can do. Brindis paid us all out because we are on her staff, so she has to give us money every once in a while. And, as a wizard, I am finally very much not poor. I have money. It's great. It's amazing. Money is so aw- You don't realize in D&D how hard it is to do things that require money until you have no money. So it's nice. I am like, I wouldn't say I'm well, well, I'm not poor. <laughs> so the first thing that happens after we take care of that is petitioners. Again, some people love them, some people hate them. I think they're just an annoyance, but I'm not the queen, so it's not really my problem. So the first petitioner is a guy that comes with his newborn baby and he wants the queen to bless the newborn baby. And the queen's like, I'm not, religious. I go go to the temple. So avoid it that because I'm sure that would be an issue if she was like, oh yeah, sure, let's do this. Uh, next, Kane, the ambassador from Ryuvik, which is like the bandit kingdom, came by and he was like, hey, you know those people in Freemensky, like we get it, like you want the free people to run, but Bran doesn't want to trade with us and we really need some food. So how about I give you this ship and you make him trade with us? Put in a new government. And Jan was like, how about you give us two ships and we'll do that. And he was like, did I say one ship? I did mean two ships. Two ships, you'll put in a new government. And Brindis is like, no, we agreed that if they don't want to trade with you, they don't have to trade with you. And so I don't think Kane was too happy about that. But, you know, Brindis' whole thing is she's not going to force people to do stuff that they don't want to do, which I'm sure will get us into trouble eventually. But I mean, so far, like, at least the people within our own country like us. The next petitioner that shows up is Germund. And if you remember from a couple of sessions ago, and I mean, this was even before I started playing as well, he kind of got into bed with some witches. I mean, I think metaphorically and actually physically. And um, they've been messing with him the whole time. Because he doesn't want that to happen again, you know, after we killed the last one, he has hired somebody to help him out. This guy's name is Van Hender, and he is a witch hunter. Which, <laughs> which, probably wouldn't be a problem for anybody in our party except for the fact that the queen is a witch. Nobody knows the queen is a witch, thankfully. And I think she prefers, I'm a warlock, but you know, that's problematic. And so Germund asks if the queen will allow Van Hender to come in and try to search for any witches that are out there. And Brindis is like, absolutely, go find witches in my kingdom. <laughs> oh, it's probably gonna turn out terribly later. Meanwhile, good old Grandpa Roz sends out his smarty pants gang kids to go figure out why this meat shortage is happening. Before we went away adventuring, we saw that there was a meat shortage. We did nothing about it and just peaced out of the city. So now we're back, we need to figure out what's going on. So I give them like five pounds of candy, which I'm, I'm a great grandpa, but I should probably feed them like vegetables or something. And um, they go off to see what they can see. So while we're going back in to check in with them, they're in like the warehouse district along the water. Uh, suddenly a net gets thrown over all of us except for Valkyrie. If you remember a couple of sessions ago, Asa, who is a bounty hunter and like Valkyrie's arch enemy, came up to her and was like, there's this bounty hunter going around and just making a bad name for all of us. He's taking bounties and then sometimes killing the people they took the bounty from and sometimes going after the other people. So let's take care of him, let's team up. 
I'll put a bounty on you, and if he comes after me, then I got him. If he comes after you, you got him. Valkyrie was a little bit against that at the time, but you know, she agreed to it, so bam, here's this guy, Judge Cadman, bounty hunter for hire, renegade bounty hunter for hire, and all of Val's friends are stuck in this net. And he's like, he doesn't care about us, he's got like this mask on, he's got his eyes set on one person. And he beats the crap of her like really fast, like thankfully we were in the process of getting out of the net, so it's not just her alone, and so we were able to draw some of his fire or attacks or whatnot, and Roz was able to get over to Valkyrie, and Roz has magic healing potions. Because like, that's all Roz does anymore in spare time is just make magic potions, because why not? So got Val back up, Judge Cabin took her back down, Yawn goes down, I can't, I can't take care of them both. But fortunately, Brindis was able to use some of her blood point abilities and get Jan back up from the dead, or mostly dead. And then he killed Judge Cadman with a pierce to the heart and got blood points. So Valkyrie wasn't too happy about that because they should have technically been Valkyrie's blood points. But, you know, say la vie, pretty much. So we check in with the Smarty Pants gang and they have found some stuff out about this meat shortage. So the person in charge of the Meat Cutters Guild, I guess, the Butcher's Guild, uh, named Svinva, is basically extending this strike. She's getting paid a little bit on this side from somebody to extend it, and a little bit on that side from someone to extend it. So it's very lucrative to her, so why would she want the strike to end? So now we've got a name and we're gonna have to look into that, but first Jan wants to stop by his offices at the Three Tree Trading Post and get some stuff done there. Sigrid, who does business with Jan sometimes, is there and she's looking for Val because she wants to buy that warehouse that Val purchased, which the Smarty Pants kids are living in. And she offers a heck ton of money, but Val's like, nope, we're, I'm keeping this. And everybody at the table thought that was a terrible idea and Grandpa Roz was maybe guilt tripping Valkyrie a little bit like, but where are the Smarty Pants gang's gonna go? They finally feel like they got a home. Anyways, still have the warehouse, which is super convenient and I like that. But it did give Jan an idea, and Jan goes, huh, if she's looking to buy waterfront property, maybe I should buy some waterfront property and then make a quick buck on that. So we kind of go about the rest of the day, we go back up to the castle, and then Sparty, who is like the head of the Freeman's Council, comes along to take Roz to the private invite-only meeting that he talked about a couple of sessions ago. So we get there, and it's basically a bunch of old white guys, and like, Roz is a woman. Shh. She's in disguise, and also Canassi, so she doesn't look like any of these people. So she probably feels pretty out of place up there. Anyways, they're all talking about how the legitimacy of the crown is not there because while Brindis was sworn in by the previous king, it was never ratified by the Freeman's Council. So technically they just be like, ah, oh, you're not the queen. And Roz is kind of against that because Roz likes Brindis. Roz thinks Brindis is doing a pretty good job. Roz is also all about democracy, so she thinks that there is a way that you can kind of manipulate this a little bit to, you know, come together. They're kind of open to it, but not so much, and then they just get all messed up on Dwale. They're like, yeah, let's drink. And Dwale, if you remember, is a potion that is helping people with plague symptoms mitigate those plague symptoms. It's not a cure by any means, but it makes it so they don't suffer so much. And these old white guys are just drinking it willy-nilly. Roz gets offered a bottle, she takes it, but she doesn't drink it, and then she kind of excuses herself and goes, I should probably go drop this dwell off at the temple because they could probably use it, because I know there's a shortage. When Roz arrives at the Temple of Eric, there is a chieftain and he is just hustling Arlo, who is the new head priest ever since the other priest died mysteriously. He is going, come on, I know you got Dwell, give me Dwell, give me Dwell. And Arlo's like, I don't have any Dwell, I have a shortage. And he's just not gonna go away and he's hassling him. And so I pull out a healing potion. And I go, oh, I got Dwell, here, take this Dwell. And so I charge him like a ridiculous amount for the Dwell. <laughs> I mean, he'll feel some effects, he'll feel better, he won't feel all messed up, but he'll feel something, and I'm sure that will come back to haunt me later. And then Arlo freaks out, because he's like, why would you sell him that? I'm like, but I have real Dwale here, so I gave him that Dwale. And while it probably didn't go far, at least it was something. And then Arlo goes, hey, have you seen Renolfer lately? Because I want to talk to him, likely about the death of the old head of the church. When I get back to the castle, I let Brindis know about what happened at that meeting, like, hey, they're questioning the legitimacy of your rule. We probably need to do something about that. Also, they're getting super messed up on Dwale, and we should probably also do something about that. 
The next day we have petitioners yet again. This is what happens. Like it's nice to go out adventuring because you don't typically get petitioners when you go out adventuring unless like the girl's like, hey queen, will you take my petitioners? So we have petitioners. It's like a farmer shows up like, hey, look at this farm hen that I have. He's a contortionist. And Brindis is like, that's gross. Go away. <laughs> but then we get some people from Loft Critic, which is a place that we were recently in slash nearby and they're looking for Dwale because there's this sickness, this curse or whatever that came up called Narcophilia. Again, don't look that up. Just like Drow Fighter Mage said, it should have been narcolepsy. And yes, it should have been, but it's not. But it basically is, but it's not even a thing because we just made it up. Anyway, they were looking for Dwale because Renolfer had given them some Dwale and said, hey, this will make it better. It might not cure you, but it will keep the effects at bay and hopefully you'll be okay. So now they want Dwale to fix all the sufferers. So basically the people that get tired and go to sleep because that's the thing that happens in real life, they want Dwale for this. That is a problem because just giving them Dwale to mess themselves up is just gonna make things so much worse. But Brindis promises to fund Roz the wizard to research and come up with a cure for narcophilia, which Hopefully won't be Dwale, it'll probably just be like some ritual spell or whatnot to make people think that it's gone. Because it is gone. Because it's not a thing. After the petitioners all leave, we asked Finva to stay because we want to talk to her about the meat situation and she's like, listen, I'm getting paid to keep this going on, do you want to cut of this? And Jan is like, hmm, maybe I should pay you to keep this going on because then I have my hunters sending in meat and I'm making a profit from this. But then Jan decides, you know, no, that's not the right thing to do. He's like, I'm just gonna create another guild and then I'll put your guild out of business. And what then? So she agrees to end the meat strike and stop taking all these payments. So that problem is no more. So we head back on the streets again after the petitioners are done and we're going past the Abbey of Eric and all of a sudden it's like sniper in the bell tower and sure enough there is a sniper up in the bell tower just shooting down at people. So Val runs in towards it, Jan takes cover and he's trying to shoot bow and arrows back up into the tower. Uh, Roz doesn't really have that far of range with spells and so what he does is he just creates an illusion so it looks like he's not there. So he's just basically illusioning the pavement below him. So not a target, not effective in this fight, but also not a target. And then Brindis like creates her like illusionary weapon and then makes herself go invisible, but she should have done it the other way around. So it's just like her bow and arrow just kind of floating around. So she comes and joins Roz under the illusion floor. But we, we don't really have too much of an effect in that battle. Val's the one who gets up into the bell tower and she like takes this guy out and like drags him down and she wants to bring him to the police. Meanwhile, Roz kind of takes care of the people that did get hit with bow and arrows, makes sure everybody's okay, stabilizes them, and then we all go to the police. Seems like he's just a regular terrorist, so we drop him off with Fisky and Lance, and then we continue on our way and we're going to the House of Holm, which is the other church that is being built in Hollinghomen which is a different god from Eric, which is the god that is typically worshipped here. So we get there and there is some foundation laid, like they managed to purchase land, but there's like no construction work going on at all. And we ask Father Adam about it and he says basically nobody's willing to build for me. And so Jan goes, I can help you out, rounds up some of his brutes and sends them to the construction site. Because that way if anybody wants to attack it, you've got people to protect it and also you've got people that are going to do the construction work. Although not sure how well it's gonna go because they're like muscles, they're maybe not construction workers, but not our problem. And again, Jan is basically just trying to mess with Renolfer because Renolfer wants to build a temple too. While we're hanging out at the House of Holm, Van Hender, the witch hunter, shows up and is like, I heard about magic at the bell tower at the uh, Temple of Eric. And we're like, oh, we were there and we didn't see anything. And so he's like, oh, okay, well, I mean, eyewitness accounts, not like you guys would deceive me at all. So, okay, all is well. So, I mean, he's off our back for now, but who knows how long that will last. From there, Roz gets to spend a little bit of time with the maps that he had taken from underneath of the keep that we had to the, the Narcophilia situation. There's the dwarven works underneath of it. Roz had taken some maps, finally has had the chance to read through them because he got Comprehend Language, he traded it with someone, and it's actually plans for how to make a fireball necklace, which is super awesome. So that was it. We did a lot in this session. There was a lot of petitioners, there was a lot of just politics and all that. I think we only fought once, which I don't know. I remember when we were playing Dark Sun and like anybody who looked at us wrong we would get into a fight with. Like Bardock was constantly trying to fight little children for some reason. Anyway, with Birthright it's more of a let's try to talk our way out of the situation. And usually when we try to talk our way out of the situation we just 
talk her way out of the situation and then make a bigger problem for us later. So, sure there will be consequences from everything we did in this session. But with that, I am going to end it here. Make sure you subscribe if you want to know what happens next. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.